Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Stefan Plex Solaris, and today we're going to cover the topic of technology in Solaris. Technology is quite a complex and intricate subject, and uh, so I'm going to have to cover it in uh, detail. Now, technology in this game has uh, two very significant aspects. You have the visible aspect, uh, which you can see from the tooltips, and there's also the invisible one, which you need the wiki and uh, preferably a tech tree to comfortably navigate. So let's start with the basics. So as you notice, every single tech has a cost, but the cost actually has two components to it. You have the base cost, and uh, you have the penalties applied uh, from expanding. We have a 1% penalty to uh, claiming a system, and we have a 5% penalty to uh, claiming a planet, or a habitat, or a ring world segment, it doesn't matter. As long as it has pops in it, it is considered a planet. Interestingly enough, your first system and planet do not actually count in this total, However, they're displayed as the 61st system, although you only get penalties for the 60 that you have claimed after your initial spawn. So next up, you have your research progress. Uh, the amount of months you have remaining is the total cost of the tech divided by your current research speed. So for example, if my society research production doubles for whatever reason, it's going to say 5 months, but it's going to revert back. Uh, if that situation disappears. Research progress itself has a very set value. It is the base uh, value of your society research or any other research output with the research progress bonus applied to it. You can get a research progress bonus from a variety of different things such as curators, scientist levels, scientist expertise, etc. These bonuses are additive though, so that means that your first percent of research progress Will be worth a lot more than the 100 first uh, research progress uh, bonus. So another thing that you have is uh, stored research which you generally obtain from events however you can create it on your own by just choosing not to research a tech for a month or more. And uh, when you go back to research uh, your stored research is actually added on top of your base cost and all of the bonuses so that means that the 87 percent uh, bonus to research progress for example does not apply to your stored research. Stored research is generated just as uh, regular research would be, however certain things such as research agreements are not applicable to that generation, so that means that it's really not worthwhile to be storing up research, also considering the fact that your research production should be increasing over the course of uh, your game. If you do miss a couple months of research, don't worry about it too much, but it is preferable that you don't do that, since you are going to be losing out on a couple points of research here and there. Also your chief scientists also have a large role to play in the generation of research progress. If you don't have a scientist, you're going to experience minus 25% uh, to your research production, and uh, so it is best to have a scientist, even if it's not a good scientist. Also certain scientists do have uh, certain expertises, for example Spark of Genius adds a flat 10% to research speed. A certain expertise will provide a plus 15% research production as long as the tech uh, that you are researching is within their field of expertise. There are also special scientists, uh, the curators, and for all intents and purposes, they are basically spark of genius, except 5% better. You can only hire one at a time, and so I really would not suggest using them for surveying anything. So overall, they would just serve as a spark of genius 2.0 scientist. Pretty much all the weight bonuses that apply to curators also applies to uh, Spark of Genius scientists, but I'll get to that later. It is within the hidden aspects of the game. Now there is a hidden aspect of the game that you can reveal uh, through the console, uh, specifically by typing in debug tooltip without any spaces or anything, and uh, that will reveal uh, tech costs weights, which allows you to know which technologies are going to be common and which are not. For example, modular engineering has a weight of 17.5, while something like Garanthium mining has a weight of 190. The game uh, draws random techs, and uh, the one with a higher weight has a higher chance, so that means that Garanthium mining is more than 10 times likely to show up than modular engineering. Now, knowing the weights of uh, all the different technologies is surely helpful, however, since it only displays uh, the values on techs that you have already I gained the chance to research, it is probably the least significant value that we're going to cover today. But anyways, let's switch out of the game and into the browser, because you're going to have two pages that are very important uh, to studying the way tech works, and uh, planning out if you're uh, trying to go for anything specific. So these two pages I will link to in the description of course, uh, but they both can be found very easily by looking up Solaris Technology, it will be the first link 
and the fourth link. So let's cover the technology page on the wiki first. You have a lot of good information on the wiki page itself. Uh, however, I've already covered most of it. What we're really interested in is this little table right here. This is how you can determine uh, the tech weight without uh, individually popping into each tech and uh, checking it out for yourself. So as you can see here, the game uses uh, six tiers, uh, the last one being repeatables, and each tier has very specific values associated with it. So that means that if you have a tech that has, for example, uh, 1,500 base weights, that means that the tech is for sure a tier two technology. The tier system is important because tier two technology actually requires you to research six tier one technologies before it even has a chance of appearing. And all of these values are separate to uh, their own trees. So if you get six uh, engineering techs, it's not gonna make tier two physics techs appear. So each tree is gonna be its own struggle. Uh, the number six is very important and uh, make sure you memorize that because it's the amount of tiers and how many techs of a tier you need to advance to the next tier. Also, after you have advanced to uh, tier two technology, tier one techs can still appear and uh, researching them will not do anything for the tier system. So spamming tier one techs is not gonna be a viable strategy for getting mega engineering or something like that. All right, now that we've covered the tiers and the costs, we can get to a more important hidden aspect of this whole thing. Uh, the weight system. Uh, now each tech has its own very individual weight assigned to it and as a general rule of thumb, higher tier technology does have a lower weight to it but there are a lot of weight bonuses that can make that a non-issue for certain techs. Let's take battleships as an example. It is a tier 4 tech meaning that you have to unlock 3 tier 1 techs, 3 tier 2 techs, and 3 tier 3 techs uh, to even get a remote chance of this appearing. All those techs of course have to be in the engineering tree and now you only have a 45 weight to it, which is way lower than its predecessors, but there are many ways that you can increase that. For example, if your neighbor has battleships, um, chances are you're gonna have battleships of your own because it's gonna increase the weight of it tenfold to 450, which is quite significant. Every single tech has its own little category of its own, and if you have a scientist with that expertise, it means that technologies with that specific uh, research subcategory are 25% more likely to appear. So that means that if you have a void craft expert uh, engineering scientist, the weight of this is going to be increased by 25%, which is about 56. These weight modifiers are multiplicative, however, so keep that in mind. Now, battleships, along with certain other techs, has a special uh, weight modifier regarding to time. If you're gunning for battleships before year 50, chances are it's not going to happen because there's a 0.1 modifier uh, to the weight, which means that uh, the weight is reduced tenfold, causing the weight to be 4.5, which is pretty damn low, and unless you're planning uh, on re-rolling and safes coming hard, uh, you're not gonna have it appear. However, most decks of this nature do have uh, certain uh, weight bonuses after certain years. So for example, uh, after year 60, the chances of this appearing double, then at 65 triple, at 70 quadruple. These also stack, and so after year 70, you're gonna have a times 24 weight. And I can't even do that in my head right now because those are some pretty large numbers. Stars does have a feature where if a tech has appeared, on the next roll, it has half the weight of it appearing. So there's a chance that you're gonna have battleships for seven rolls, but those chances are pretty damn low because it's gonna keep decreasing every time it appears in a row. It is reset after the tech uh, does not appear for one time, so you're not going to lose access to battleships if it somehow appears four times in a row. So the knowledge of weights and uh, tiers is going to be very important if you're gunning for certain techs. Generally, you're going to want to maximize the weight of the tech that you're gunning for. So for example, putting on a void craft expert uh, as your engineering scientist, and uh, also even getting some supremacy traditions up and running is going to be very helpful. However, just knowing uh, the weights and uh, the tiers uh, you're still swimming in a semi-murky pool, and to make sense of this pool, you're gonna need to know uh, the prerequisite requirements. And this is where the Stellaris tech tree is gonna really, really come in handy. Because for example, if you're going for galactic administration, you're gonna need to unlock planetary unification and colonial centralization to even have a chance of this appearing. Certain techs uh, do have special requirements from other fields though. For example, galactic administration is necessary if you're going for synthetics, for example, and that, that is not really displayed in the Stellaris tech tree. Now a gentleman by the name of Sobrenity 
has posted a couple very nice images on the forums about uh, the different tech paths. He also writes a lot about uh, technology and uh, specifically technology beelining, which I may or may not cover in a future episode. And these are extremely useful because of the fact that they include uh, technologies from other fields and those are not shown in the game on the tech tree or anywhere else for that matter. And I'm, I may even cover uh, beelining very slightly. Now, if you really, really want to get certain techs, uh, there is some sense in going uh, for a beeline and actually sacrificing uh, some branches uh, to increase your chances of uh, certain techs appearing. Since a lot of techs have hard requirements that you have to fulfill for them to even have a chance of appearing, you can completely wipe a number of techs out of the pool by just not researching uh, their first component. So for example, if you're not going for a coil gun uh, in your engineering tree, you're not going to have to deal with 16 technologies uh, that might otherwise pollute your engineering pool. Of course, the chief problem with this is that you are going to miss out on a lot of techs and since uh, the beginner techs are very cheap to research, you might actually just want to uh, research them eventually uh, to recycle the pool if you do know that there is a tier 4 technology available to you. So while uh, going pure beeline is probably not the best option uh, for most of you out there, it is a very viable strategy if you want a gun for certain techs. Now let's briefly cover how you're actually going to get the research uh, necessary to dwell of in this amazing world of technology. So a thing that is going to benefit virtually every empire is building some research habitats. And in fact, not just a research habitat, but a research unity habitat, which increases both your unity and your research production. So for example, this single habitat is producing 37 physics, society, and engineering research just on its own. It is also producing 17 unity, uh, which is necessary for traditions, of course, only consuming 19 energy credits. However, if you're really concerned with the energy uh, production, you can simply build uh, two solar power processors and your habitats will not impact your economy whatsoever. There are countless bonuses uh, to having more pops uh, ever since they uh, changed in 2.0. Pops don't actually affect the cost of uh, research, uh, meaning that you can have as many pops as you want uh, without any negative impacts on your research, or even traditions in fact. The next thing I suggest is uh, going for research facilities uh, wherever you can. So for example, if I have a tile with nothing on it, I tend to go for an engineering facility, or in fact any sort of facility that you might want, although I recommend going for either engineering or physics. Uh, because they're the most uh, valuable branches. Society isn't all that important for your military resource or research production. Going for some extra engineering is really going to help you out. Also, a way you can get some uh, modest engineering points uh, is going for a Tundra World right off the bat. A Tundra World has the highest chance of engineering tiles spawning on it, as well as mineral production tiles, which are always good for your economy. And so going with a Tundra World will put it just that little tiny bit above the rest in terms of engineering production. I also recommend uh, always going for Discovery as your first traditions tree because you get access to not only a flat 10% research speed bonus, but you also get increased anomalies and you are going to be getting a lot of stored research uh, from all the different events, boosting your research even further. I also recommend going for Technological Ascendancy as your first ascension perk after finishing Discovery and uh, that way you get a flat 20% bonus uh, to your production after finishing the tree. Also, one last thing, you might want to uh, get some aid going from the curators because you will not only get a flat 10% research bonus, if their opinion of you reaches above 50, uh, you can recruit one of their scientists and as I've mentioned before, the scientist is an upgraded uh, Spark of Genius scientist. So yeah, I believe that about does it. And I'm gonna do a little poll in the right corner of the screen, it should pop up. And uh, the question is, do you want to see a video like this on beelining or not? Beelining is uh, very complicated and I will provide plenty of examples of how to do it if you guys really want to see it. So if you enjoyed what you heard, uh, please consider leaving a like. I'll be leaving all the links necessary in the description for your pleasure. And if you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe because I'll be coming out with this sort of content a bit more often. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.